and welcome to today's podcast episode, Dive into Reiki. Today, I have a returning guest, Yolanda Williams. She was here, probably one of the first interviewees for the podcast, talking about her Reiki journey, also in a round table talking about teaching. But today, we're talking content. And in part, this is uh, because the Reiki Race Global Summit is coming, and they offer content and interviews with many, many, many Reiki masters from around the world. It's a wonderful tool. Yolanda is going to be the host. She also has what was the first Reiki podcast, I think, uh, in the space, at least well-known. She was a little bit of a pioneer in this area and inspired many people uh, like me to come up with our own voices, our own platform. So I'm really grateful for Yolanda. And today we're going to be discussing a lot about content, uh, the evolution of the amount of voices that are being represented in the Reiki world, and of course the summit, and also perhaps tips if you want to be on a podcast, tips if you are or want to be a podcaster to make things easier. Uh, you're going to see that a couple of things are consistent, lots of work and consistency. And I really enjoyed talking to Yolanda beyond everything else. And I hope you enjoyed this interview as I much as I enjoy my time with her. Hi and welcome, Yolanda. Thank you so much for having you again. I am so excited. Like Natalie, I'm always looking forward to talking to you. I'm just always kind of like, oh, I can't wait to see where our conversation goes. <laughs> I yeah. know. I think lately, like, let me interview Yolanda to see how she's doing. So I'm really, really grateful. And uh, today is going to be a little bit of a different interview from my podcast uh, format. Usually I go over your journey and your oops, but uh, actually I have an interview already with you where we discuss all of that. Uh, it was one of the first year of the podcast. So I'll refer and I put the links on the notes for that. But today I wanted to talk because we're approaching another global summit from Rocky, Reiki Race. I participated in a Latin American uh, global summit in Spanish. There are all this information, there are amazing number of podcasts coming up. And when I was backtracking, uh, actually you were my inspiration, but beyond my inspiration, you were actually the pioneer. I have trouble with that word in English, sorry. The pioneer of Reiki podcasts, right? So I'm like, okay, let's go back to the source because it wasn't always like that. When I started Reiki, there was nothing. Uh, there was like Diane Stein book and a couple of insane references on YouTube. So tell us a little bit about how you started, why you started. Yes. Well, listen, it's an honor to have this conversation and be here with you again. Um, and you say pioneer beautifully, just as a side note. Yes. Um, but very similar to you. It was when I first started with Reiki. I guess I should say, I mean, you know, someone recommended that I have a Reiki session done. And so I really didn't know anything about it. And I went in very blindly, but when I Googled it, it sounded interesting enough that I signed up for a class. And even after taking my first classes, level one and level two, there was still this curiosity, but there was really no information out there. It was all kind of like hidden behind. You had to go into a class to find out like, what, what Reiki was really about. And so I actually ended up studying with a lot of different teachers because that was really the only way to find out what it was that people were practicing and what was being taught and what the various points of view were at that time. And what I didn't know, well, I didn't know anything. I didn't even know about <laughs> Reiki, but I, I was um, very diligent in my practice out of curiosity. I was fascinated by the technique. I was fascinated by just the sensation of energy and all of these things. So I really did practice a lot just out of awe and curiosity, but I didn't know that the energy work itself was going to cause a lot of shift and change within me. I thought it was just like, oh, it's going to help relax my mind and my body. And I had a very different healing experience than that. It was very emotional as well and change in perspectives, all of these things. But no one was saying that. And so I was like, am I the only one going through this? This can't be so. So I thought, um, well, I want to talk about it. I want to put something out there in case there is anyone else, even if it's one person that may be going through this healing journey which felt like a healing crisis at the time, quite frankly. 
Um, if anyone else is going through this, I just want to share with them. I am too. <laughs> and these are the tools that are helping me. So it was like Reiki was the catalyst, but it was also the medicine, so to speak, right? It was what was causing me to look at myself and have all of these different realizations, but it was also like the soothing balm that kept me steady and grounded through the process of my healing. So that's what inspired the podcast. I just wanted to have conversations or at least talk about what I was wishing was already out there and available for me to hear from someone else. That is beautiful and very generous uh, because most of the time we learn Reiki and we're like very confused and we're thinking to ourselves, you were actually already thinking about sharing, which is at the core of Reiki, right? So that's beautiful. And how did you start? Because when I started, I so overthought everything, I ended up getting my computer, my Zoom, and that's it, and a microphone. Uh, but that, again, you started years ago. Who wants to start a podcast? Like how many people will listen? Yeah. It was a different world there. It was entirely different. I, honestly, I had never even heard a podcast. <laughs> um, and so it was just one of those things back then. <laughs> there wasn't even Zoom. Everything was a teleconference. So I had, you know, been familiar with teleconferences and I tried to do some teleconference offerings like classes and these things. And back then, like no one showed up, but I did it anyway, because I felt like I wanted to give myself the practice of holding space, even though no one was there. Um, and then there started being these web conference kind of platforms. And um, so that started evolving even before Zoom. But podcasting, I must have just Googled somehow. Like I didn't want to blog. That was very big back then. And um, I definitely didn't want to be on video. Like I didn't want to be on YouTube because, you know, I didn't want to do makeup every day, quite frankly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's a very good reason. Yes. Yeah. I, you know, it's, I just, I didn't, you know, I just didn't want to get ready really to that degree where, you know, I already thought I'm putting myself out there where I'm already going to potentially be criticized with 10 other things. I don't need the visual on top of it right so he's wearing somehow a lipstick shade yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly like that's what you focused on in this okay um but I I somehow came across podcasts and had never heard one but I'm very comfortable with you know technology and this type of thing and so I just thought well I'm gonna try it out and when I first started um there was a podcast platform, but I didn't have any equipment. I didn't have a microphone. I didn't have anything. I just had the computer in this platform and, you know, like press record and see what happens. And I asked a friend of mine to do it with me um, because I was nervous. I didn't know what to do other than have a conversation with her. And so she did the podcast with me for a little bit. And then she had other things that she wanted to pursue. So I stayed with it, but yeah, it was just me, bad, terrible sound quality. And I didn't know at first if anyone was listening and there was no way for me then to, I didn't know how to see the numbers or the stats or, so I had no clue for all I knew, no one was listening. And it was that way for a while. Wow. Mm -hmm. And what kept you going? Like, because I probably like, if I feel like I'm talking into nothingness, probably I will enjoy the dialogue for a bit, but after <laughs> a few months, I'll be like, okay, next. Yeah, honestly, well, there's two things. One, I really felt like even if one person heard it and if it would have encouraged them to stay on their path, then I felt like I was giving back in some way or I was like helping like this, this, you know, energetic friend out there like even if I never met them or heard from them um it, it was just the potential that somebody could get a benefit from recognizing they weren't alone in the questions about Reiki or <clears throat> what they were experiencing or the classes just all the things especially because for a lot of us our questions don't come until after class when we actually start practicing right and everyone doesn't have 
um, the benefit of staying in connection with their teachers. And now that's changed in some ways. More teachers are open to staying in communication with their students. But back then, that really wasn't a thing. It was like, you know, your class is over and good luck. Uh Um, So there was that. But there was also, it was, it ended up being very, I don't know if I would say therapeutic, but insightful for me. Because when I would go on the podcast and talk about whatever it was I was encountering at the time, I knew what I thought about it prior to talking. But once I actually started talking, you know, your mind starts going and I started having these realizations of like, oh, this is really what, you know, it was kind of like therapy by myself. I was on the couch in an empty room. Like that's basically, uh, so yeah, it was therapeutic, but also just hopeful that it would help someone. And how did it evolve? Because then you started growing and actually started bringing very important Reiki teacher, but then also healing other healing modalities. So what happened? How did you make that jump? Yes. So one of the things um, was back then, and this makes a big difference, is I was very consistent. I didn't miss a week. I showed up every single, I think it was Wednesdays back then. I didn't ever miss a day for you know, over a year, a couple of years, and it was the consistency. And then I started receiving emails where I knew that people were actually listening. And so, and again, I didn't know how many, but I knew there were at least a couple of people. And I still remember the names of those, you know, people who emailed me back then. But um, I started getting response. And at some point, I want to say it was over a year. It took a while, um, maybe into the second year of doing the podcast. Uh, people started asking questions or sharing with me what they were going through. And so then not just talking about what I was going through, I would also respond to what people were saying they wanted to know more about. And I want to say I did it for three consecutive years. And it just got to a point where I felt like I had nothing else to say. And at that point too, I didn't get that much engagement from people. You know, that I would get a few emails here and there, but nothing crazy. And so I did an episode and I was like, okay, well, bye. It was fun. Like, good luck out there if anyone ever hears this. And I stopped. And about six months or so into not showing up, I started getting all of these emails like, hey, where'd you go? Are you coming back? And but I was like, wait, what? You guys were all listening? I had no idea. <laughs> so I took off a year and then I came back because people were listening and I had no clue. Um, fortunately, the archives are there. People can listen, you know, even when you're not posting. But when I came back, I started getting um request to interview people and actually our teacher Franz was one of the first requests I received an email from I guess his publisher um, for the inner heart of Reiki I believe that was the book it was and you know they're like you know this is the book he's a Reiki teacher all the things and would you interview him about this new book and I read the book and it was incredible because He was the first teacher, I guess, well, the first teacher I had encountered in Reiki at that time, who actually was describing what I was experiencing that I hadn't heard anyone else talk about. So I interviewed Franz and then from there, I don't know, I don't, I really don't know how it happened. It just people started asking me to interview them and I was more than happy to do so, (laughs) you know, yeah. But I, I, I could honestly say the only thing I could think of is just I was consistent yeah. and I was honest. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't coming and trying to fluff anything. I was very honest with what I was sharing back then about, you know, the good and the bad and what was challenging and what helped me to work through it. So I think a lot of people um, could resonate and relate. And I think that's what really helped the podcast in the beginning. No, and and I think you said two very important uh, things because I think people are starting podcasts and then by episode eight, they drop out because it actually takes 
a lot more work than what people think. It's like, oh, they're just talking on Zoom for an hour. It no. takes a lot of prearranging, pre-studies, like, you know, a lot of yeah. thinking, posting, editing, and, and money, ironically, as yes. well, right? So yeah. even if you know technology, you still, there is a moment you cannot jungle, like, all of it. And then the honesty part, right? Like, we are not all perfect. A Ricky is not supposed to make your life perfect. Like, you know, seeing the reality and then our practice evolves, right? And being true to, right. to the stage where we are, which I really appreciate. And I think yeah. it's very fortunate we have people like you. And hopefully sometimes I make jokes, but hopefully I can keep it honest sometimes. But yeah. I think also like right now, there is so much, uh, there is a lot more content than when you started. And even when I started three years ago, it's going to be three years crazy wow, congratulations pandemic baby uh but so how how as a person now new to reiki how do i how do i listen to all this content like what should i be like you know how do i find myself what is good content or perhaps what is fluff any tip on like finding the content mm -hmm. right for them which is hard right yeah do it intuitively ourselves yes well i have to say first of all really truly congratulations because you are absolutely right. It takes a lot of work to do podcasts and it was a lot even when it was just me, but I think a lot of people don't recognize or realize it can, it's challenging. I mean, especially when you are doing interviews because on top of, you know, trying to schedule with people and finding the right time and we have people in all different time zones. Like I've done interviews at the crack of dawn. Like you can't even imagine the things that have happened <laughs> for an episode, right? But then to your point, like we do, we then we have to edit and we have to create the content and we have to create the post and then, oh, there's, there's a lot. It's a, it's literally a job, right? And, but you're trying to squeeze that job into and around yeah. the rest of your work. Yeah, yeah, it is a lot. So congratulations for sticking with it for three years. Um, yeah, well, with all the content, I this is what's so funny about it, I guess, is I said I started because there really wasn't much content back there outside of books. There were plenty of books, yes. right? Um, but because there wasn't a lot uh, outside of like blogs and books, I didn't really have to sort through a lot of anything. So I didn't have much of that confusion. Um, it's so interesting because in this, just in the, the community of Reiki, there are a lot of different practices. There are a lot of different ideas. There are um, just a lot of different views and opinions about Reiki and of itself. I mean, from any lens of it, there's, you know, various points of views and opinions. And I mean, honestly, I think the only thing you can do is acknowledge what really makes sense to you <laughs> and what feels resonant to you. Like, don't just take information blindly. And I think honestly, that's what's helped me in this realm period, because as you know, it's not Reiki isn't the only thing that I've studied. I was curious about everything. So I've studied various modalities and various systems, but some things just don't make sense for me, right? And I think sometimes people just assume if they don't know what to expect and they don't know what to ask and they don't know what it's supposed to be, so to speak, you can be met with anything and think just blindly, oh, this is what's true. I always think that people should be more investigative, you know, and see, compare, look for uh, what really would matter to you about the system, you know, find out about the history, find out about the roots, find out about the different lineages. And again, just see what really resonates for you, because it can honestly even be confusing, because there are so many different ideas, which I also think is beautiful that we can practice so freely and we're not really in a box, but I also think it's important for people to have an understanding of the origin as much as we can. I was literally, I just had a, an interview with Nicholas Pearson, who I know you know as well, and yeah. he researches and yes, he's brilliant. Um, he has a deep love for the roots and I asked him, is it challenging for you 
when we are constantly learning and finding out something different about the history and within the community and just in our humanness, a lot of times we get very rigid about what's right. And then a couple of years out, you find out, oh, actually that wasn't quite right. Right. And so they, I think there has to be an openness of mind, recognizing that what we may know technically about Reiki is, you know, have an open mind about it. It may continue to evolve and change as people find out more, but just be investigative. Don't just stick with one podcast. Listen to several. Don't just listen to what one teacher says. Listen to several and see what really speaks to you. I, I think you said something very, very important about listening to many voices, uh, especially, for example, with the upcoming Global, Global Reiki Summit. For me, when I was a teacher, I, and you know, I'm like, I'm like this very purist, like traditional Japanese or what we yes. call traditional Japanese that may not even be so traditional, but we call it like that. But one thing that has been very helpful is I go to the Global Summit, I go to your podcast, I go to uh, Colleen's or Andrea's podcast and I listen because I get students who are transitioning to my style and they come with another outcome. And at the beginning, I cannot go like yours is wrong or right. What I want to do is to understand where you're coming from Yes, but I can tell you, okay, you see it like this, in this lineage, we see it like this, it's not worse and better, but I understand what you meant and I can teach you the transition, right? So even we have a style, or for example, imagine if I'm, I don't know, Natalie Ping Pong Reiki, <laughs> you know, and I believe that's the truth. Uh, when, for example, I hear your interviews, I'm like, hey, look at that style. So that's why they mentioned this, and I can really then convert the whole world to Natalie Ping Pong Reiki. You know, that's a joke, but, but it's been very helpful for me to teach other people and also to soften what you're saying, right? I was very rigid at the beginning, but you know, like this is the way, simpler. And now the more I hear other people, I'm like the less rigid, the more softened. I'm a Scorpio, I tend yeah. to be rigid, you know, I'm like, <laughs> and like, and I'm like, it's actually richer. I may not agree, as you mentioned, with all the point of view of Reiki. They're not for my way of, like, they don't go with my personality, but right. the more I respect other people, because I, the more I see where they're coming from, uh, you know, and yeah. even also misinformation about Mrs. Takata, for example, like they gave me Mrs. Takata, her version of history was two lines. Uh, Mikao Sui, doctor, went to the mountain, got enlightened, Reiki was there. I was reading a book uh, about a guy who has transcriptions from Mrs. Takata classes, they're actually a lot closer to what I'm learning with the traditional Japanese style with just a tweak at the beginning, right? So yeah. even what we are here, as you say, we have to investigate. The story I was told was given by Mrs. Takata was not the story told. It was by that teacher who they went from one page to two paragraph to one line to one word, right? Right. Yeah. And I think in that, and to your point of even, you know, what we're talking about now, I think that's why it is important. And I'm thankful to see now that there are more Reiki podcasts and there's Reiki YouTube shows. And, you know, we are having um, more conversations within the community as a whole, because one, we're sharing. <laughs> and so we're all having more of an opportunity to learn and have access to information that perhaps your teacher didn't. Yeah. And I think that's another thing that's important too, and why it's so beautiful when we allow ourselves to be more communal <laughs> within the community and have more of an openness of mind and just a willingness even. You don't have to agree with people, but just have an openness of the potential that you may be able to learn something. Because what if, like I always think of this, like what if I had only studied with the first teacher I ever had? I wouldn't have had probably half of the experiences I've had or known half of what I know now from having the ability to study with different teachers and having um, access to different books. And quite frankly, being able to interview so many amazing teachers and authors and practitioners. And then the global summit, I got to meet and speak with even more people. And the really cool thing about Reiki and this community is it's not only that you have the potential to learn about Reiki and of itself from various lenses, but then you have people within the community who hone in to very specific aspects of Reiki. So you could, you know, listen to someone on a show or read their book where 
they're very specific about a particular aspect. Like maybe they go very deep about the symbols or someone else goes very deep about uh, Reju. And, you know, um, I think of like Amanda Jane and um, okay. oh, Zilke. Okay. Yes, Zilke. Yes. yes. I interviewed them last year on the summit, but their book, Women in Reiki, was just like, wow, right? Like who thought to even do that research, right? So, I mean, it's incredible now that we have access to so many voices. And um, I hope that people won't limit themselves to thinking that they can only listen in the lane of perhaps who they studied with. There's so much out there, but <laughs> use your discernment. <laughs> that was like, for, yeah. for those of you I listening, you missed the cutest uh, butt face ever. <laughs> Well, it's true. You know, we all, and it's not just with Ray, with anything you study, anything that you hear, like, you know, we all have to use our discernment. And um, again, they, but even without judgment, just what feels right and true for you, what interests you and what do you want to leave on the table? You don't have to accept it all, but man, there is, there are so many people doing incredible work. I mean, even you've authored two books yeah. um, about Reiki. So yeah, thank goodness for that. And thank goodness for everything everybody's doing. And right. one thing I also love, and the more I notice is hope. And I hadn't thought so much until I did the podcast and I started talking to people in Europe. And now mm -hmm. I'm trying to get some people who are at least Latin American, even if it's living in the US, but because the language yes. part is hard. And one thing is wonderful is we are not Japanese. So when you go out, but you also interview Japanese people, everybody has also a cultural gift to raise yes. you, right? Your culture really is a filter. And, you know, even in this country, like the, according to what group you are, you're going to perceive Reiki differently, right? Yes. So for me, being able through uh, the podcast to research, because I, one of my goals is to bring very diverse voices, right? Yes. And I've been trained to bring everyone. It's like, everybody gives it a beautiful flavor that is unique. And then it becomes this big diamond with a lot of little facets and for me, that's also the beauty of a global summit, for example. You're going to hear yeah. people from different cultures, and that has a touch. I was talking, I think it was with Tonya Parker, and we we're talking about ancestors. And, and mm -hmm. that has like a flavor that is very Japanese, ironically, right? And that's not her culture, yeah. but it's part of her culture, too. Mm -hmm. So I, I think for me, also bringing diverse voices and having a global summit, uh, they perceive things in the same teachings that I didn't see because culturally, I'm blind to them. So yes. that's my also part of my passion. I'm so excited that you're going to be with that Global Summit as well. Yeah, I'm very excited to be a part of the Global Summit. And um, part of that is because uh, the people who run it do make um, an effort to make sure that there are diverse uh, voices heard and shared and, you know, Reiki from all the different lenses. And I think it's very important because especially when I first started, again, there wasn't that much <laughs> available necessarily outside of books, but the the well-known in the Reiki community, like what we'd even consider like the Western faces of Reiki, it, it wasn't diverse. And now I don't know that it is, but I know in the Global Summit, you will see more diversity there. And it's interesting because I do know of, especially from podcasting, that there are people from obviously globally, all the cultures, every everything you can think of. I always um, joke that I wish that the the hopefully we will see more of um, um, diverse representation in the greater Reiki community. I say I want it to look like a Prince concert. Have you ever been to a Prince concert? No, no, no. Oh, one of the most diverse experiences you could ever have. I mean, he's no longer with us, but I mean, it was every age, every ethnicity, every, every person you could think of all just dancing and it was incredible, but that's how I see Reiki and I see it in pockets, but I would love to see us all just, you know, kind of collectively unified in that way. Um, and through the summit. I think you get a really beautiful glimpse of that. And to your point, there it's global. There are literally people from all different countries and with different points of view and different lineages and different ways of practicing. 
it's it's very eye opening. I mean, it'll make you just like blow your mind open with the possibilities within the system. It's no, it's fantastic. And it's funny, yeah. sometimes we get upset because I have the same thing. Like sometimes I check some uh, stuff, like some panels and, and perhaps there is mostly representation from one kind of people. And I have to say, I'm discovering the power of a question. I had a beautiful interview with the head of the Portuguese Reiki Association. And he had this Reiki history and science panel. And I literally, because I saw he had a lot of women in other panels, I said, like, why are there no women in your panel about Reiki history and science? You know, and sometimes we become a little defensive, like, why are we left out, my particular group? And he's the sweetest, most beautiful human being. He said, Natalie, I don't know any women who know about history. I'm like, I said, well, I know some. He's like, do you want to come? And so Silke and Amanda, Rika Saruhasi, yeah. we went. And this time we're more women than men. So wow. sometimes it's just the power of asking questions, right? The, or yeah. just raising our hands like, hey, here I am. I would love to talk about yes. this. They, I remember when I started with a book that you interviewed me kindly, I sent a hundred emails. I was, no one know me. I wrote a book. I wrote a book. Do you want to talk to me? And I got two or three yes that were very kind and I had fun. But we need, as people, if we have a point of view, we also need to raise our hands or ask questions. And if you're not the person for the podcast or ask why, uh, maybe you're a little too young or maybe like experience and then keep that in mind and then practice and come back. That's a really good point, Natalie. There's two things with that. One, that's why um, for me, I'm so thankful that I was even asked to be part of the global summit. Like I said, it is very diverse in so many ways, not just, you know, ethnicity, but just in points of view and ideas. And it's diverse Everything. all the way around in every way. Um, but, you know, representation does matter. And a lot of times when people see someone who looks like them in the the promos and these types of things, there's just something in us that relates to like, this is for me as well, or you know what I mean? There's that relatability. So it is very important that, um, you know, and it's a beautiful, beautiful, I mean, the summit is just incredible. I'm so grateful Very just for the people that I've got to meet and talk to. It's, it's, it's beyond, but in any case, to your point, that is also something that's very important, important to point out. If you are someone who does want to contribute to not just the Reiki community, I guess just anywhere in your life in a way, like you want to do a podcast or you want to do any form of content. Definitely. If someone gives you any bit of advice, don't be defensive about it. You know what I mean? It's like, I've had um, some people reach out to me sometimes for a podcast and it'll be very vague. Like, hi, I'm Betty. And I do Reiki and I want to come on the podcast and I'll even ask, I'll respond back and say, okay, well, what would you like to talk about? And they're like Reiki. And I'm like, well, what about it? And so then I will recognize like, okay, maybe they haven't been on podcasts before. Right. And that's not a no for me, but I'll respond and say, Hey, just so you know, when you reach out to podcasts and this is even for everyone listening, it can be very helpful if you say, what it is that you want to discuss and be specific. Is it how Reiki can support alleviating pain? Is it working with Reiki and children? Like be very specific um, so that the podcaster knows potentially where this conversation could go, but more importantly, how it would be beneficial to their audience? Yeah. So um, if you ever get responses like that from people, when you reach out to them, like, please don't take any offense. Just know it's genuinely just trying to help you out because like for me, I know I'm not the only one you're reaching out to. So I'm just going to give you a little piece of info, just a little help you with, you know, as you pursue working with other people and doing other collaborations. But yeah, definitely ask if there are people that are doing the thing you want to do, reach out as well. It's a very I would say this community in general tends to be very friendly. You know, reach out and ask. I'm and, sure and it's not you. It's, you're not the right fit. For example, I get a lot of, of yeah. people who want to talk a lot about Western Reiki and that's not mostly my platform. Sometimes mm -hmm. I get a few, but what yeah. I do, sometimes I even refer or like I have someone who has, I don't do storytelling. Like, you know, yeah. I don't, 
I'm very much about teaching and very specific like Reiki, Japan, yes. 1930. And I send them like, okay, storytelling is for this podcast. So we're trying to help. But I think you said very something very important. Be specific. Uh, yeah. Get a unique point of view. Something that yes. is very personal and true to you, as you've been mentioning. So we all come yeah. to the circle. And the other thing is, if you've been practicing Reiki for a year or two, be honest about that. You right. probably talk about Reiki as a new person. What is experiencing your first year of Reiki practice? Your questions uh, what you learn, the big surprises. <laughs> because we think the first year we know it, but actually we're newbies, right? And it's a beautiful stage. We all go through it. So yeah. also be very real about where you are in Reiki. It's okay to be in the first year of practice and learning. Yes. Listen, like, your story is probably more interesting than someone who's been practicing yeah. forever. It's true. Like, like a lot of people think that they have to be at like, or even pretend to be at an expert level or something like this in order to have a voice. But the truth of the matter is we all just like authenticity and yes. everyone within the community hasn't been practicing a long time. And so you may be speaking directly to that person who's curious, the person who's in the exact same boat as you. That's the same as when I started the podcast. Like, are you kidding me? I was saying, what the heck is going on? <laughs> like what? This is bananas. So yeah, I think we all appreciate and can even feel authenticity. And wherever you are in your path, that's the best thing for you to speak about and share. And you'll continue to evolve. It's just the way it goes. Yeah, just stick to it. And again, I think that honesty, we've been talking authenticity, yeah. being specific, and, and also like taking the no and not stopping right like understanding is not personal like sometimes those people are booked for years keep yeah. trying and don't send one email send a hundred requests to different people yes yes be very consistent yeah for that. And it's it's absolutely and keep trying and i think for podcaster on the opposite i will advise actually to know the person you're going to interview so yeah. I guess that's for people on our side because you probably had to get familiar with all the people from the summit and your interviews. How do you mm -hmm. do that in a way that you don't spend your whole life doing it? The, I'm so glad that you say this because this is very, very important. I think for anyone thinking about podcasting, like, yeah, get to know a bit about your person that you're going to interview <laughs> because it really does impact the conversation, you know, and it's interesting. I've um, had the opportunity to interview several authors over the years and oftentimes they're shocked that I actually read the book and I'm like well how else would I talk to you about the book if I didn't read it you know um, but it does it makes a difference in the conversation and that's only going to help the quality of potentially what your audience will be able to learn if you have done enough research so to speak to know even what to ask the person who is coming as your guest I I also just feel like it's respectful to be quite honest for me I'm like I want to talk to you <laughs> it's just you know I don't know it seems respectful to me but for the summit I had the wonderful opportunity this year in the summit to uh host 17 interviews yeah. and that's a lot that's and a lot. that yeah that's and some of the interviews here. had more than one person yeah it was a lot and um so it is it's 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 a lot <laughs> but, but you do it's I but I, I'm so curious like one thing is I'm very very genuinely curious about people's stories and with the thing that's so unique about the summit is again, I mean, you have all the different lineages, all the different points of view. You have some people that are very focused on like bridging the gap between the scientific and the spiritual. And you have people who are, again, talking about very specific aspects of Reiki. Um, the woman who co-hosted, we co-hosted together this year, her name is Heather McCutcheon and she does the Reiki Brigade and that's phenomenal. She's like working with the police department in Chicago I, I mean people are just doing incredible things and you can't spend all day researching anyone of course but my trick is <laughs> I if I know I'm going to interview someone I will um, read a bit about them like maybe I'll go to their website 
if I'm re doing an author, I have to read their book beforehand and give myself some time. But in general interviews, I will research at the time of a scheduling, but then I will also do a review like 20 minutes before the actual interview so that their story and their work is fresh in my mind. It just, it just allows the conversations to be more natural. And again, my questions and my inquiry is very genuine, but also don't be so rigid about what you think you're going to say to someone in an interview, because if you try to be too scripted, that will also come across and it won't sound like a natural conversation. So you also want to have that openness of really listening to them. And then the questions will just form naturally based on what they share. So that's my secret. <laughs> the fantastic secret. We're sharing the secrets now. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty similar to you. I think I do a lot of, like also social media check. I check their social yeah. medias to see what is their voice a little yes. bit. But yeah, I, and I'm, I have a list of questions and then I may go off, but I'm sure to have questions that are actually specific to them. Yes. Not just like, I have the same at the beginning, always on the end, but in the middle, there's, it's not just like, what's your Reiki journey? What's your story? I actually try to ask yeah. questions that they feel I took my time to know them yeah. so that they, they feel like, okay, she's not just giving me the 10 questions everybody yeah. does. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, the thing is, is you really want your audience to get to know them. I mean, that's the point in, you know, sharing the content anyways, so that we really can learn. And so you want to make the most of that time with a person because who knows if you'll get to meet or exchange with them again, you know, and it really is to me, it's an honor that anyone that we could take the time to sit and have conversations with each other. I mean, sitting here, having this conversation with you now, I, what, it's like nine o'clock at night for you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm glad, you know, I so it yeah, yes. it's actually yeah. the perfect evening, I have to say. <laughs> I'm really no and the other thing is like also like not everybody can afford to study with many teachers right yes. like uh trainings uh it depends on your income but trainings are expensive and then yeah. people don't fly to all the cities so you have to put travel and I think the beauty of your podcast and other podcasts as well as mine or the global summit or now the Spanish global summit that is doing a fantastic work of connecting uh that part as mm -hmm. well is we're bringing some of that knowledge from the training uh, yeah. to everyone. And perhaps it's not the complete training, but it's a little bit of an insight here, something that can spark something in your practice that otherwise you will not be able, because, you know, I, I haven't been able to train with Yakuten or with Hiroshi Doi because I literally don't have the time or money to do so, right? Yes. Uh, so when I read or when I hear the interviews, then I gain a little bit of their wisdom and I, I'm grateful we can do the same for others as well. Oh, a hundred percent. There's nothing that makes my day more than when I get an email from someone and they really resonated with the guest or they um, got excited about just whatever the person shared on the podcast. I mean, again, that's what it is about. And to your point, yeah, we don't all have access to all of these teachers and um, all of the different trainings. So podcasts are a beautiful way for people to have that accessibility and again it just I feel like it strengthens that sense of community for us which is so important because a lot of people who are practicing Reiki don't have people in their immediate lives that they can even talk to about you know what it is that they're learning or what they're exploring a lot of people in our personal lives may not understand what it is that we're encountering on these journeys. And so it can also just be so comforting to hear <laughs> that other people are saying things that are relatable, but also to your point that we can learn so much from. And because you said that, it reminds me of a very important thing about the summit. So the summit will be coming out very shortly. And the beautiful thing about it is <clears throat> on I believe it runs for about a week, but there are a number of interviews that are released each day of the week-long summit. And on the day that the interviews are released, like say there's a couple on Monday, a couple on Tuesday, the first day that they are released, it is free. And people, you know, you don't have to pay to watch. So even if you don't, 
if you can afford to buy the all access and to all of the recordings, you can still on the day that things are released, still get all of the gorgeous teachings and information. Um, however, if you are able to, you can purchase a ticket and get access to all of the recordings so you can go at your own pace and listen when you can. And it also contributes, you know, to Reiki race. Um, and they put a lot of work into this. Like yeah. it's a lot of work for me just doing a podcast, doing the global summit. I, I, it blows my mind, the amount of work that goes into putting this together. And again, really for all of us. No, and, and it's, I talked to Maria, who's like organizing it. And yes. she's like, I don't feel comfortable speaking in English, right? Mm -hmm. But I think also to clarify, we're talking about the summit because we really think it's a great tool. Uh, yes. Yolanda and I, we literally, I've been a guest, you've been a host and mm -hmm. a guest. We don't really have any economical involvement and mm -hmm. in this. We just want to really offer this information because mm -hmm. it's an amazing resource for the Reiki community. So we really want to invite you for that. And yeah. especially with Yolanda as a host, like she's like the kick-ass host. So yes, you're like amazing in doing it. <laughs> Thank you. And Thank Heather you. is lovely. I interviewed her too. So I'll put a link to yeah. her interview where she talks about uh, the working with the cops, with the Chicago yes. police. So I'll put all those notes. I'll put also, I don't have, uh, I'll have the dates and when I probably post this uh, in November, yes. it's the summit. So I'll put all the links on the notes and any final words before parting? Yeah, I mean, I would say definitely if you have or haven't attended the summit, you know, definitely do that. You can um, look up Reiki Rays. You can find them on Instagram or go to the website, but mark your calendar for it because you really will be introduced to so many like teachers and practitioners that you may have never heard of. And I think one of the most um, incredible parts about it for me is not just meeting new people, but also finding out all of the ways that people are using Reiki. Again, like with the law enforcement, in hospitals, with children, um, with the Akashic Records, like anything you can imagine, you will hear stories of people sharing just the beautiful ways that they are either researching, developing, um, there's just so, so much that I'm sure will inspire everyone. So, and if you are thinking about being a content creator, it's going to take a lot of work, <laughs> but you definitely, you know, be open to, and even asking for um, feedback suggestions from people who are doing it. And I would also say, you know, leave a review you know rate the shows like oh, yes. natalie's beautiful podcast yes like it means a lot yes. for us oh. it helps the visibility and it helps these conversations reach other people who are seeking community so just even wherever you're listening to this if you you know leave five stars for natalie's podcast any well, book write a review oh, yeah. go to reiki yeah. radio yeah leave five <laughs> stars over there but really, truly, even with all of these authors who are providing us more teachings about the system, you know, leave a rating when you order the book. It helps tremendously. So that's one way we can all give back to the people who are taking time to help us all learn and grow. Beautiful. And I'm going to close to, I was thinking like hope through it is that there is this sharing of Reiki because we're two podcasters. We're not competing. We're supporting each other. And nice. on the contrary i'm like so grateful you exist like you know so please if you're coming up there is no competition it's the same as we teach in reiki there is space for all the voices yes. just know that it's gonna take as we said a lot <laughs> and the other thing is like plan ahead to at least do six to ten episodes so also yes. the option of having a season uh just at least have clarity on what you're going to talk for six episodes because if not by the second you may run out of Talking from experience, blogging, not podcasting. Yeah. 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 Have, a, have a clear vision. 
yeah, have a clear vision and know that, I mean, it may shift and change. And then also, I mean, I think one of the main things is just making sure you realistically have the time for it because it really, while it may look like, Ooh, this just magically appeared. Natalie is going to go and do a lot of work <laughs> to put this together when we're done. So just do know, I mean, just realistically speaking, these types of things, they do take a lot of time. So hopefully you have the time so it can continue to be something that you enjoy just be honest in your sharing. And yeah, I mean, I'm thankful for you and all of, listen, during COVID, a lot of podcasts came out during then. So yeah, yeah we have so many beautiful voices now to learn and grow from. And um, it's just amazing. It's incredible. Yolanda, thank you so, so, so much for your time today and your time doing all the wonderful interviews and also for that beautiful oracle. We didn't talk about it because it wasn't part of the interview. Uh, but when you see her original interview, she was talking about an oracle. I'm going to put the link because it's one of the most beautiful oracles and thoughtful that I own. So uh, hopefully you still have a few. So I'll put the link there. Yes. And, and thank you very much. And I thank you so much. Up with you, there is so much growth and change and evolution. I'm just in awe. So thank you. Thank you, babe. And we got to do it in person one day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank Bye. you.